What's up, everybody? Welcome Yo. back to an amazing episode of the Glory Boys Podcast. Today, we have our homie, our employee, our really good friend, our good looking, our smell <laughs> smelling good and, and lovely man, Ray Price What's on the episode. What's poppin'? And it's going to be What's awesome. Poppin'? We're super excited. Before we dive into the episode, we're going to talk about all kinds of awesome stuff on this episode. But today, before we get into it, let's roll that intro. Yeah. So let's just dive into a little bit of backstory on Ray. Yep. Here. Ray, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who yeah. are you? Who are you even are you? Yeah, who are you? So you want me to start from like the way, way beginning? Like the first like day you were uh, born. Yeah. <laughs> are you sure? Because that's a long story in itself too. That's true. You're like 26, 25. 26. And you were born like four 26. times. Yeah. So actually, fun fact, my heart stopped three times. And yeah, I. Uh, so my heart stopped when I was born in Brownsville, Texas. And then it stopped again in Corpus, which was like an hour away. And then when my parents were on their way from Texas to Nebraska, my heart stopped on the way to Nebraska. So instead of going to see their new house, they went straight to the hospital. And yeah. Dang. So you died and came back to life four times. Basically. That is sick. No but, wonder. But if so you cool. ask me the story about it, I know nothing. And every time my parents tell the story, they cry every single time. Wow. And I just sit there in awkward silence because <laughs> I don't know what to do or you what were a to baby. say. Yeah, because it's, I would, I don't know anything, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't really learn things when you, one, you're a baby and two, you're dead and then you're back to life again. Yeah. It's I'm true. like a cat basically. <laughs> yeah, you have five more lives. No, that's there, sick. I mean, clearly God wasn't, you know, done and has a lot of really cool stuff for you in your life. And look at you, you're 26 and married and tell us more about your life. Yeah. So I actually grew up in Norfolk where uh, Austin from here. Yep. We went to high school together and didn't know each other yeah. at all. Austin was too cool for me. He just didn't care about me. Yeah. Those I swimmers guess. are really popular. Yeah. They're, they're a pretty <laughs> pretentious bunch if you ask me. Yeah. Austin was really mean to me. He was the biggest bully ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're getting into just slander now. <laughs> just kidding. Swimmers are cool, and so are you, Ray. So I was. What else? Hey, I was not in the popular. I was the, the. I was in the nerd group. So you were the popular nerd. I was not. I you was were the nerd. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I, I, I was a nerd too, though. Like me and my buddies used to play COD every single day, and we were like. <laughs> the I, mean, biggest, I wish I knew you in high school. <laughs> we were like the biggest geeks ever, where we would like literally talk about, "Oh, dude, did you get a nuke, bro? That nuke was so crazy." Oh yeah. Good old Modern Warfare 2 days. Literally. It was the best game ever invented. Mm. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I went to, uh, a little bit about me, I went to college at UNL for a year, uh, my freshman year, and then like in the going into the sophomore year, I lost like one of my best friends that was going to college with me there, and so like not lost us and died just like okay <laughs> I was just, like, he just wasn't my friend anymore got it and so i moved back home because my mom was sick too mm -hmm. and so i was in norfolk for two years i hated my life i was going to community college there and i was like dang this is kind of pointless and like even like the first year of college at northeast i actually technically flunked out but my parents didn't even know like what was going on or what I was doing with that. You just got to um, trick them so they don't know. Yeah. Right, yeah. Austin? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You just, how's school going? <laughs> yeah, it's it's great, mom. Literally. Getting well, good grades. My teachers like me. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Yeah, Austin wasn't in school for like a year before they're free. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Dang, what a sad. I eventually had to come to the point where I'm like, hey, mom, I don't really know how to tell you this, but I haven't been in college for like two years now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even till this day, your mom still doesn't know what you do. Right. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's true. Unless she's listening to this. Hi mom. <laughs> Hi mom. But but, she probably isn't, but anyways. Yeah. So I, I was at, I was at Northeast and I hated it. I was like, I basically flunked out and then going into like my second year there, uh, the guidance counselor was there and I was talking to her and I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to graduate this year. And she looked at me and she goes, no, you're not. And I was like, oh, I am going to graduate and I'm going to prove it to you. And so Ooh. I literally took like so many credits just to graduate that one year and I did it. And then I decided to move back to UNL and at UNL, like I started off and I was like, oh, I want to go into, uh, you know, 
I don't know, nursing, let's do nursing. So I started to like do all these science classes and I was like, dude, this is really boring. And so I was like, I was like, nice. okay, then uh, let's do something else. Let's do uh, business because everybody does business, right? Yeah, like, that's what you do when you don't thing. know what to do. Yeah, literally. And then I, I was taking business classes and I was like, wow, this is even more boring. Like learning about macroeconomics or microeconomics. I was like, dude, I don't want to know any of this. So I literally like that going into my senior year of college, I was like, wow, like I need a life change. Like I can't do this. I don't like any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So again, I was I was put up with that that situation again. I I went to a guidance counselor and I was like, "Ooh, I kind of I kind of always been doing this video stuff. I I kind of like taking pictures. I, I really like doing everything and like just creating a story, right?" Mm -hmm. And so I went to that college, which was the College of Journalism. I went to the director and she got me with like a guidance counselor. And I was talking to that guidance counselor and I was like, "Yeah, I think I'm going to switch to this major." but I don't want to be here anymore. So can I graduate in a year? And the counselor looked at me and she goes, uh, no, that's not going to be possible either. And so I was like, what the heck? Dang. Like, what am I supposed to do then? Like, how yeah, am I like going to go to college for another two years? I don't want to do that. Yeah. And so I looked at her in the face too. And I said, I'm going to do it. And then, uh, I, so that, that first year, uh, in the summer, I took like 18 credits, which is like unheard of, of anybody to ever do. And then I, in the fall, I took like 20 some credits and in the, in the spring I took another 20 some credits and then I graduated basically in a year. But from that year I learned a lot. Like I, I shot for uh, the Huskers a couple of times. I was at a couple of Husker football games and I shot a couple of photos for them. Uh, and then we did this like one story. Um, do you guys remember like, I, I want to say like five, six, seven years ago, there was like a flood in Nebraska and it took over in like the Nibera area type of situation. Yeah, I do remember that actually. Yeah. So it literally, uh, there was a professor that I had and he wanted to take a team of students to go up to that area and basically like document all these floods that happen and uh, like interview people and whatnot. Well, he selected me to go to one of those and literally I had no idea what I was doing. And I, I showed up to the first town <laughs> This town was like full of like, I want to say like 30 houses. So there's like a good 30 to 40 like families in that area. Well, this flood like literally washed away this whole town. Like there was nobody left in this town. Dang. And it was like the craziest thing ever. Um, and then we also toured some, uh, some farmer's house. And he was a fourth generation farmer. And he literally like... He, he was talking to us about his story. And so basically like what happened was the ice that was in the river mm -hmm. came down and just basically broke the dam and just all the water started coming out. And so that's what caused the flood, right? Yeah. Well, this farmer was like crying, telling us his story. Like I lost all my animals. I lost all my plants. I lost everything. Wow. And he literally like, we were telling him cause his family, uh, like got up and moved to, uh, I think it was Florida. Mm -hmm. They went and moved to Florida because they had a house in Florida. Mm -hmm. And he literally was like, but I can't leave. Yeah. This is my home. Right. It doesn't matter if there's nothing here. Were you filming this? Yeah, oh, we okay. were filming this. Dang. I don't know where it's at anymore. Sure. But. I'm just saying that's like really powerful. That's a powerful story. Yeah. It was cool, dude, because uh, he had a son who was like probably 16 or 17. Yeah. And he's like, he's the one that's going to take it over now. Mm. And it was like cool to see because it was. This farmer was like, literally had nothing. Is it close by? Um, It was like four hours away, I want to oh, say. Oh, got it. It'd just be interesting to go out there now and see like how they've, you know, come back and yeah. from all of that. And it'd be a crazy story. Yeah, sure. it's, it's cool too because his son was the one uh, that came like 30 minutes after we were done interviewing him. Mm -hmm. He came and he was like, yeah, I'm still here too. I'm not going to leave this place. Like, wow. My dad meant this place to be for me. Yep. So I'm going to keep it going. I was like, wow, like talk about the impact of like generational like family and like, mm. I was like, wow, that's amazing. You know? Yep. Yeah. That's really good. And then, yeah. I don't know. Do you guys want me to talk a little bit about uh, coming to my city and meeting you guys or? So you graduated. Was this before you graduated? Uh, so I graduated <clears throat> college. I assume so. While you're in school, you did the documenting. Yep. Yep. So I did the documenting <clears throat> and then I graduated college 
And uh, then I actually met Beverly during like that senior year area. And I was like, sick. She lived in Omaha. I lived in Lincoln. And we were both like deciding on, okay, so if we're going to make this work, we can't live in two different areas because it just doesn't work out that way. Facts. And so uh, she was like <laughs> really convincing about moving to, to Omaha. And uh, at the time, we were like trying to figure out churches because – I was Catholic, and she was Pentecostal basically because her her uncle has a Pentecostal church, and he's mm. a pastor of it. Yeah, and so we were both trying to figure out like, cool, are we gonna stay here and be Catholics because that's what I was, <laughs> or uh, are we gonna do something differently? Yeah. Well, we had heard about this church uh, called My City Church, and I was at UNO at the Thompson Center at the time, mm-hmm. and good old uh, days. Yeah, literally. Uh, <laughs> It was uh, Haley McDonald. I don't know if you guys yeah. know who that is. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But sh- she was really good friends with Beverly because mm. they were both from Columbus. Yep. Mm-hmm. And she had kept inviting Beverly to come to the church. And she was, Beverly would be like, well, my boyfriend is Catholic, so I can't really do that. And we decided to give it a try one weekend. Yeah. And we started to like it a lot. And at first I was like, wow, this is weird. Like, why are people raising their hands? Like, <laughs> why are people singing out loud? Like, yeah. What's going on? Like. When do we kneel? Like what? what like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like coming from a background of like Catholicism, yeah. like this was all brand new to me. Like, totally. And I remember the the one service that we went to. It was a five p.m. service, and literally the whole hour, uh, they sang Victory, like for an hour they sang like Victory, mm. and I was like, wow, this is this is weird. This is different. I've never seen this before. Yeah. And it was like I think it was that moment that I realized that. I like this church yeah, and I like the environment and the people mm-hmm. and we weren't really connected at that point. We were just coming like here and there. Sure. And like sometimes we'd go out there and sometimes we'd go to a Catholic mass because in my head I was still Catholic. Yeah. And it was kind of cool to see like the transition in that. But ultimately we decided to move to Omaha mm-hmm. because we started to go to the church. Right. And then we just started to get more involved and yeah, now I'm here. Dang. Yeah, I'm trying to think. The first time I met you was at a Halloween party at my house. Oh, yeah. That's a funny really? story, You and Beverly too. came, yeah. That was, was the that first th- time you met them? It was the first time, because you had told me about him. Because oh. all I remember is Darren was like, hey, there's this guy here, and I met him, and he seems really cool. He says he wants to be a film, like a movie director, a film director. And uh, yeah, so then we met at the Halloween party. Yeah, because I had time. met you prior to that. Um, was that the one where I went as uh, the guy from The Door? Uh, no, you were John Wick. I'm I was sure John Wick. No, no, no that, that's the guy from the door. <laughs> yeah, no, sim- similar, but I was the guy. What was same, his, same. What's his name? Ah, oh, did, did not hit her. I did yeah. not. So you were not uh, John Wick. I was not John Wick. Oh, man. I should have been. I though, mean, it's, but he pretty much was. <laughs> no, I was like, like the older, creepy brother of John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so there's a movie called The what? Door. The well, do- the, the, the Disaster Artist. The Disaster Artist. the Franco brothers. But it's a movie about the door. About a movie called The Door that this guy- It's incredible. Real guy put all this money like into millions. doing this huge production movie, but it was just terrible. The worst like, movie ever. It was so bad. He hired like the best of the best, yep. all the crews in, in Hollywood. And like everyone ended up just like quitting on him at the end, couldn't finish it really. So they like- They would shoot like a hundred takes together. of one scene, yeah. like a hundred in a row. Up. And then, it was so terribly written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hilarious though. The Disaster so, Artist is a hilarious. So movie. the Disaster Artist is a, uh, a, a like a rendition and like a, a cinematic story of like- uh, James Franco plays the guy that actually did this. So it's a really great movie. Yeah. It's really incredible, but it's just, it's bizarre. So that's, and, yeah, that's and James Franco does a, an incredible job of acting as this guy. Yeah, really. And I never had heard about the door like ever. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's like a thing. Um, and, and I'm no just, one knows anything about the guy, like no family, so all like these, where he's from. But everybody was getting speaks, paid. Like, dang, that's yeah. weird. And he just like had all this money. And it was like, it wasn't like he really scammed. He just had a ton of money and paid people to like put yeah. this film together. And it was just really bad. And it, and it released and was it, now so it's bad. a laugh, laughing stock, but also kind of like, like one of those Hollywood treasures that people remember as 
one not to yeah, do. The disaster <laughs> artist, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what, I, <laughs> there you go. That's uh, what my Halloween costume was that year, but. Nice. But yeah, that's where I met Ray and Bev. Yeah. And uh, you guys started serving on team. Yep. And you've been on team for a couple of years now, three, four years. How long have you been on team now? I want to say three years. Yeah, yeah. it's probably got to be three years now. Yeah, it's definitely three. Yeah. Started yeah, out, I mean, you, you'd you kind of shot, like you said, in college, some mm-hmm. video and photo and stuff. Yep. But um, I would say you really still had to kind of learn the like Funny. settings and camera basics and stuff. I didn't yeah. know if they... Because so I went from, you guys shot with Sony's. Yeah. And I shot with Canon. Mm-hmm. And shooting with Canon was way different for me because this, even like holding the camera itself was like way different. Like yeah. the setting for the camera was on the back yep. versus Sony. It's like at the top and on the front. Well, for a Canon, it was like everything was reverse. Yeah. So I had to like program my mind to think the other way around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was just such a short time of learning something way br- different. Right. That I had already forgotten it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, dang, now I got to relearn everything again. Mm-hmm. But there's yeah. actually, so a funny story. Uh, that that day that you invited us to go to the Halloween party, mm-hmm. I'd met you the night before. Yeah, at, uh, at HQ. Yep, it was some leadership event or something. Yeah, you rolled in and Dan, uh, Pastor Danny came up and was like... No, it was yeah. Clyde. Oh, it was Clyde. He's yep. like, yo, this guy wants to be a film director. And I was like, oh, let's talk. <laughs> yep, and then the next day you, you hit us up and you were like, oh, do you guys want to come to this... Halloween party. Yeah. And me and Beverly, like we had never been like around anybody else other than like Rachel and Clyde. Yeah. And so that day we were like, we were on our way to Austin's house and we were making fun of it. We were like, gee, you should imagine like they're like partying and they're going crazy and they, they have beer pong and all this stuff. And we show up and that's what exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you guys had a pong table. People, people I think we had, had two of them set up in the in the basement. Dude, yeah. who doesn't yeah. love a good game of beer pong? Yeah. And so we were like laughing at it afterwards and we were like, wow, we literally, that's what we thought it was going to be. But we were like, nah, that can't be it. So it was funny to see that it was actually that. Yeah. <laughs> even like right there, like it kind of uh, like shut down anything I had or any like ideas or stereotypes that I had about Christians. And I was like, oh, they're just regular people. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. And so like even that there like made me realize like, wow, I could be Christian. Like, cause again, like I was still Catholic. So I was still trying to figure out like, yeah, oh, like if we get married, like, am I going to be Catholic or what am I going to do? You know, yeah. so it was kind of cool to just see that part too of like. Just homies chilling. Yeah. You yeah. Loving Jesus and hanging out and have a good time. Right. You guys were normal people. Yeah. yeah. You guys awesome. showed up as like peanut butter and jelly or something. No, no, I don't remember what we did. You weren't merman, and you guys were like really cute. It was like something matching, or was that maybe Katie and Will? I don't remember. I feel like it was you guys. I think you guys rolled up as like remember. ketchup and mustard, or like something like super <laughs> yeah. adorable. I was like, "Yo, these guys are homies." <laughs> no, like, I hate ketchup. I hate that mustard. is <laughs> that is true, which is so weird because they're both so delicious. Yeah, yeah. So then you were on team. Yeah. And you've been on team ever since. And yeah. here we are. Yeah. All yeah. right. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was <laughs> There you go. You're all caught up now. <laughs> well, no, along the way you got married. Yeah. We got a, we got a chance to film your wedding in, in yeah, Colorado, which was dope. Yeah. That was pretty. Yeah. It was literally it was a God driven wedding. Yes. Like the whole time. Like I remember even like, so at my wedding, we were going to get married on a cliff. Yep. And Austin was being like devil's advocate. And he was like, Oh, this is a terrible idea. We shouldn't do it. Uh, we're gonna, we're breaking so many laws. We shouldn't wait, 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 do wait, wait, wait. this. Yeah, this is and true. This checks no, we got to back up. No, this you guys, out. you guys, we're gonna. You're planning on doing your wedding on a cliff that you cannot reserve. <laughs> no, no, no. You can as reserve a, it as a disclaimer before you continue this story. Yeah, and Listen, then I was like, it's yo, not a let's place you can to book. that freaking cliff, and we're gonna so they're go like, get you married. They're like, oh yeah, we'll be fine. Nobody else will be there, and I'm over here like. No, it's like probably one of the more popular outlooks in the whole area. <laughs> there's going to be people here. And of course we show up and there's, there was a, a wedding, wedding going on yeah. at that, yep. at that yep. moment. There's a wedding happening and yeah. I, we show up and I'm like, it's fine. Oh we, no, this is not going to work. And so we sat there for like 30 minutes. We, we watched, we watched the wedding. Yeah, it was beautiful. We were, we were uh, you know, participants in the random person's wedding yeah, before yours. It was great. Literally. And then I think there was another wedding also waiting, but we got there first. If I remember right, there was another party really? that wanted to use the cliff, but we kind of like 
as they were we like snaked doing it. the kiss and exit, it. like a few of your family members were like yeah. sneaking in and just like claiming the little cliff area. Cause oh, there yeah, was, nice. a, there were people waiting for us yeah. Um, yeah, during the ceremony, it. but it was we great. Snaked. Cause they all got to sit there and watch as you guys said, beautiful vows in a beautiful location. Oh, it was with so beautiful good. weather. Oh, and yeah. so good. Yeah. It was gorgeous. And then like the whole reception was in that cabin, which was sick. And was, then like the a bunch of family session? just turning up. The portrait sessions though. Yeah. Climbing down the cliff to get on that huge rock. Yeah. Yep. And like Bev just crushed it in her heels, like didn't even care. Yeah. She literally like said, make me do whatever you want. Yeah. So we yeah. Can make it cool. And like, it doesn't suck. <laughs> she was such a champ. It yeah. was incredible. I, I was so pumped and pleased with how all of that stuff came out. Yeah. Same. Dang. What a film. What a day. What a weekend. That was fun. So Colorado was super beautiful. We love it. We love shooting weddings there and your wedding was just awesome. So yeah. it was an honor to shoot it. It was so much fun. Yeah. So then time went by and you worked at TD Ameritrade and a few it. other places. And you love stock trading. I feel like I just, I feel like you were pretty unhappy. No, you love trading stonks. At your workplace for, for a while. No, he loves it. Well, a funny story. I was working at Menards for like seven years, so anything was better than that. So sure. <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. I love Menards. I do. I don't like it as much anymore. Sure, sure. But before, when I didn't work there, I used to love the store, and I was like, "Oh, this place is cool." It yeah, smells yeah. like wood. Yeah. Yes, I money. love <laughs> the smell of Menards. It just smells good. Yeah. Literally, and then uh, and then I started working at TD. Yep. And then they like got out. They got bought out by like Charles Schwab. So it was like a weird transition of like, mm. am I going to have my job? Am I going to lose my job? Got it. And then uh, one day, so we were working from home at this point. Uh, one day, like I went to go log on to my computer and I was like, okay, let me start work. And I had came back from like a three day vacation or something like that. And it wasn't working. And I was like, okay, what the heck? Did I forget my password? So I, I tried it again and it still wasn't working. And I was like, all right, this is kind of weird. And I tried to contact like the tech support um, like group or whatever. And I'm on the phone with them and he goes, well, have you tried this? And I was like, yeah, have you tried this? And I was like, yeah. And then he's like sitting there and he's sitting there and like silent. And he goes, oh, hey man, you should, uh, you should contact your manager. And I was like, why? He's like, um, you don't work here anymore. And I was like, oh, Sick. okay. Jeez. So I literally was like, cool, I guess I got fired. And I literally like, I uh, like texted my manager because I didn't even have his number because he was so brand new. Like he was such a brand new manager to me. And I was like, I texted him, he didn't respond. And I was like, what the heck? What do I do now? Dang. And Sick. literally, uh, Beverly, my wife, she was like, well, I mean, we knew this was going to happen. They were just like laying off people left and right. I was like, true. And at first I was excited and I was like, thank God, I don't have to work there anymore. <laughs> but then I was like, oh crap, I need to make money. Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do now? And literally like I tried to figure stuff out and then, uh, and then I started doing video for another guy and that went pretty great. But then things just kind of fell off and it just didn't work out anymore. Um, and then at the time, like you guys were, you guys had just moved into this office, mm -hmm. into this building space, and you guys were doing a bunch of stuff, and you were like, oh, crap, we need somebody to record a vlog for us. So you hit me up because I was free. Yeah. I didn't have anything going on. I wasn't doing anything. And then I shot a vlog for you guys, and then I just kept doing, like, little stuff here and there for you guys, mm -hmm. and then you guys hired me on. Yeah. Yeah, so we had been discussing right after we hired Carrie – um, just really like who was next and what that could look like. And we're like, okay, the next person we hire probably needs to be another editor because mm -hmm. the more that Darren and I can pull away from being involved with every project, the more we can cast vision and take care of the things we need to take care of. Yeah. It was just one of those things. Like I feel like all of our hires have been where it kind of just made sense at a certain point, right? Not just because you didn't have a job at the time, and we were trying to rescue really you from, yeah, but you know, it wasn't like 
oh, Ray needs a job, so we're going to give him a job. Yeah, yeah I'll never give a job out of that. Yeah, that, that's out, just, of, out of lack. It's not, it's not fair yeah. it's to just, you it's, either in the end. Yeah, that's yeah. But it was really just like seeing you grow so much over the past few years, grow and develop not only in your skill, but who you are. Yeah. Like your marriage and as a husband and yeah. um, as a leader, all of those things. And then like really like hiring you kind of contract for those few weeks was really great because it kind of gave us an opportunity to test the water with, okay, you know, what does this look like and what value really does this bring? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think over the course of those few weeks, just doing that, even just having you really work on vlog stuff and more in-house content, we were like, okay, this makes sense. And we were in a place where we could do it. And we're like, cool. And honestly, like moving from four to five and like three video proficient people to four video proficient people has already freed up so much because we're now able to send, you know, two person team out yeah. to film an interview or something like that as That's opposed so to just, Hey Bray, like we're not available for this. So can mm-hmm. you handle it on your own? It's, it's just really nice being able to um, do that. And with our, you know, building more retainer relationships with clients, yeah. um, it just adds so much flexibility to our calendar because really there's very few very few times right now where none of us would be available to go cover something. And that's, I think a really good place to be. Heck yeah. Yeah. No, it didn't suck is what you're saying. Yep. It didn't suck. <laughs> Ray, I have a question for you. Yeah, what's up? How is it working at glory visuals? Uh, do you want the truth? Yes. The whole truth, but nothing but the truth. So it's help terrible. me God. They treat me so bad. Mom, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're out there watching this. <laughs> This is a send this for needs help. To be Please, first. I can't make phone calls. Can you WhatsApp? <laughs> WhatsApp. <laughs> WhatsApp, dude. I never even had that until I had to go when I was in Mexico. That's how they communicate with you. So yeah. like your host, Literally. your host, yeah. like will message you all your times and your yep. dinner reservations. And I'm yeah. like, what the heck? I don't want WhatsApp. I couldn't even download the app because I didn't even have service. So right. Like, Literally. So no, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually great. Um, it's cool too. Cause it's a change of environment. Of what I was used to. So like, uh, doing video for somebody else, like as an insurance person, it was like such like business stuff. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't like that. It was just like very businessy for me. And like, I didn't like doing the businessy stuff or like the, the quote unquote, like economical stuff that you see everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so like working here, it's been like a great change of pace where it's like some days I'll be editing a vlog or some days I'll be, uh, editing a, a review video or even like editing for a client or yeah. like going on shoots for something else. Mm-hmm. So it's cool. Cause like, I feel like every day I'm like learning something new Yeah, and it's just like a change of space. And it, it's like literally whenever I have a question, like you guys have already done it. You guys have already experienced something like that. Like the sure. other day we spent like how many hours <laughs> trying to figure that out. And before you, all, before you <laughs> called the it guy over. Yeah. Austin's yeah, our uh, in-house it guy. Yeah. Literally. He uh, will fix anything. If, if my computer just literally glitches for a second, I don't even try anymore. <laughs> I just go, Austin, come literally. fix this because literally and then if I'm not available right that second, I quit. But then I'll like come over like <laughs> two hours later and they'll be like still working on it and I'll yep. fix it. And like, 13 seconds and yep. then it'll be good to go again. I'm literally, I've taken, I'm okay with it. I've accepted it. I don't, I'm not good at computers. Yeah. So if something doesn't work, it's fine. If you don't computer, dude, it's cool. <laughs> if computers work good, dude, I'll crush it. But if they don't work, dude, I'm not working, dude. <laughs> literally though. <laughs> no, for real. I'm going to play with my tech tech for like an hour until it's it works. True. It's true. If I, I will- hear the, if I hear the little click, <laughs> Like oh something. Happened to- well, Darren's computer must be down my again. Drives, my hard drive's not mounting, and yeah. so I'm gonna do a couple kickflips. <laughs> literally, it's funny because Austin will just come over and he literally will fix it in like 13 seconds. Yeah, like every single time. It doesn't exactly matter what 13. it is. He he'll look it up and he'll be like, "Oh, it's just this. You just gotta do this." Yeah, you just gotta and do we're, that. We're just sitting there like complete idiots, and we're like, "No, it's okay. that wasn't it." I feel like troubleshooting is one of my personality types. <laughs> for sure. Whatever 100%. number of Enneagram is troubled, the troubleshooter. 14. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah. All right, mm-hmm. I'm an Enneagram. One, two, three, 14. four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, nine. That one. <laughs> oh. It's a six, five. I'm a niner. Oh, niner. Niner. Oh. I, I'm a niner on the Enneagram scale. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's the troubleshooter. So yeah, like I was saying, like having you and, and you help is like the greatest thing ever. Uh, but it's also like 
having another set of eyes like Bray, like mm-hmm. it literally helps so much. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes I'm like stuck on something and I don't know what to do. Yep. And like we both think differently. Yeah. And it's cool too because I feel like Bray is very creative in everything she does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feel like I'm like outside the box creative where like I think about something way stupid and I'm like, same. Oh, I can make this work. Yeah. And like, I feel like Bray is more like you where she like thinks about something very creative, but it's like very technical. Like it looks really cool in the box. Yeah. It's a really beautiful box. <laughs> Literally. But like even having her help me out and like all of us like collaborating together, yeah, just it's the like best really works out amazing. Yeah, yeah. God's really cool. He has really brought together like the best five people that I could ever imagine doing this with. I think like even adding you last, you're the last person we've added and we were talking this morning in our meeting and it's like, man, who else would we add to this team? Like not in a weird, like boastful, we don't need anyone else, but it's like, man, God has really uniquely made each and every one of us mm-hmm. for this company. Yeah. And it's just exciting to think who, who else would be a part of this. And when we, you know, we just hired two people, so we're not hiring right now. Um, but it was a blessing. We did actually get a resume in our email today. Um, from a bride that we worked with. And I mean, she's an incredible person, really bright, really smart, and would be an excellent hire. And it's just cool. People look at our company and say, man, I want to work for them. Yeah. Yeah, For me as a business owner, and I'm sure for Austin, it's super humbling. And it's really amazing that somebody would see our company and say, Hey, I would love to work for them. And she has like a degree and all of that. And so, yeah, it's just really cool. I think God really um, place each and every one of us. And I'm excited. I mean, we are going to grow. That's yeah. not an option. Oh, that's totally. Not, that's our vision is too big for five people. Yeah. And so, um, I'm excited to see what God has in the future, but adding you to the team, like I was saying is like, it just made sense. It's like, you're literally, it's just so unique. I wish all of y'all could see us in our Monday or our, our morning daily stand up. Um, we do a devotion together. We talk, we pray. Um, and it's really awesome. We set the day, the pace for the day and it's just, it's funny. We laugh a lot. We have a lot of uniques, um, and each and every personality, but I just, there's something about it that just works really well. Yeah. And I love it. And you add like a massive value to this company and I really appreciate you. It's like one big happy family. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. At least for now, we're not sick of each other yet. <laughs> yeah. Except for... But- uh, Carrie and Ray fight all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Carrie literally will pick a fight with me on everything, but it's not in a terrible way. It's like a, it's like, little. It's like a brother, it, sister. You, yeah, yeah you literally like, said it today. It's like a brother, sister thing. And I was like, yeah, but I don't pick any fights. Carrie's the one that will pick a fight with me. Exactly know. what a That's brother would so say. That's so false though. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're definitely an equal partner in the, the thing is, <laughs> here's the thing. Ray is an angel. Nobody else is. <laughs> yeah. End. Yeah. There yeah. you go. You hear that, Bray? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it has been just a really cool dynamic as we add people. Yeah. Um, each individual person, like Darren said, like all of our all of our personalities are different. Yeah. And we all have just different strengths and weaknesses, but in a way that I Compliment. feel like sup- complement each other sure, really yeah. well. For sure. Um, and so it's been even cool. Like as we get projects, like okay, who who do we feel like would be the best to edit this? Well okay, let's give Ray a shot at this. You haven't tried this type of project yet. And just seeing like, even you guys kind of figure out what types of projects you really like and are passionate yeah. about and are good at yeah. um, has been really cool. And I think more I than it. anything, like getting to send clients projects that really I didn't do much on. Maybe yeah. I cleaned up audio here or there or sure. yeah. we went through it with you and added a few touches here and there. But like- right really being able to just sit down and give feedback and then get yep. a video across the finish line and have clients freak out over it is really, really cool. So yep. yeah, you're doing a great job. Bro. Great job. Yeah, It's a good feeling. Like when a client, when like you expect something way different or you think the client's going to like overreact and be like, Oh, I hate this because, <laughs> because they don't like a lot of the clients don't really give you a lot of vision. They trust your vision. Sure. Yeah. And so like you creating <clears throat> yeah, your own vision, it's like the greatest thing ever because then you're like starting to realize that, Oh, I do know their brand. Oh, I do know the way they think. Mm-hmm. And it's cool because you can like imitate that. Yeah. And like you like exceed their expectations like above and beyond. That's fire. It's awesome. Way to end the podcast. That was straight cash. <laughs> no, that's really great. Well, Ray, thank you so much for being on the podcast this week. Yeah, thank you for having me. You'll be you'll be back on again, but we just wanted to introduce you to Ray since we've, you know, kind of done that with all of our employees. Want you guys to get to know the team. 
um, and the dynamic as you build your businesses. And ultimately, like our wish and our prayer for you guys is that you will find yourself in a place where you need to scale and you need to grow. You need to hire people. Um, and we pray that when you are ready to do that, that you have candidates and people that you already know, that you already gel with, that are part of your community already. Um, best scenario that you've already poured into and really helped train up yeah. um, that you can hire and that they can really come alongside you and build your vision with you because it is way better doing it together than it is trying to do it alone. If you are on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a rating. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button down below. Like the video if you enjoyed this episode. Leave a comment if there's something that you would like to see us cover here on the podcast and make sure you hit the bell to be notified when we drop videos. Right now we're posting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, back to back to back videos. So make sure that you hit the bell so you don't miss out on that. But until next time, we love you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.